whenever <clears throat> whenever you want to kind of demonstrate because you know we had Cal for such a short period of time that after he left I was like well what's the I guess I never even really asked him what's it matter if I can hold my arm against your arm you know what I mean I, I didn't really ask him the, so, the implications of what that really means you know so this is and this is what he talks about Cal's amazing he's so sharp but he just says you know two things and then you know, obviously, he just expects you to just extrapolate <laughs> all of it out, right? Yeah. Just like, and which which is great because that's how his brain works. Uh, so essentially, it's literally it, all RBR is. It's, it's a system of daily self care techniques, right? That allow you to build. For me, the most important thing is it reduces pain in my body and it builds resistance to stress in my life. Those are the things that are most important, for me, right? So everybody in stress right now is talking about okay, change your lifestyle, right? Which is which is super important, like remove stressors. But the, the big thing everyone's realizing is the micro doses of stress that we get, not the big, like, you know, I got fired. Those things we Thank feel. You Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We feel that, right? We feel tension in our chest or, you know, butterflies in our stomach. It's the micro doses, right? It's uh, someone cuts you off in traffic. It's, you know, you get a, a phone call. Well, even the heart. anxiety of like lifting and then yeah. following a, something that was laid out by a coach, you might have yeah. anxiety over the weight that you're supposed to swap for the Exactly. Day. That's and, a stressor. You know? And so what happens is we're, we're not designed to live in this environment. We are animals. We are designed to survive. So we're hardwired to survive. And so basically the same part of your brain that lights up if a bear came in here and started chasing us is literally the same part that lights up when you're stressed out over a lift or when you're yeah. stressed out over work or your kids or whatever. And so because we're not built to handle a hundred of those stresses a day, it impacts our health, it impacts our sleep, it impacts everything. We get these injuries and all these things and we just think, ah, it's life or it's this. It's not, it's actually because we're living in an environment we weren't designed to live in. Yeah, we made it. Exactly. Made it, yeah. And so this is the whole thing where everybody is starting to realize these micro doses of stress and, and the toll it's taking, the injuries it's causing, the health issues. And so what everyone's doing is they're saying, all right, we need to manage those and, and you know do things to de-stress and all this. And those are great strategies. But the way I look at it is if we go in the gym and Mark and I go through your squat and we spend two days, I mean, just dying. Yeah. And you understand it perfect, it looks beautiful, and then we put 10 more pounds on the bar than you can handle, what happens to your form? It goes to crap, mm -hmm. right? So at that point, we have two options. Take the 10 pounds off, right? And then it looks good again, or we make you stronger. And so that stress, all this environment we live in, that's like having 10 more pounds on the bar than we can do. And so it's impacting us negatively, and everyone's going to take the weight off the bars. With RPR, you don't have to take the weight off the bar because it allows you to build resilience, AKA get stronger. And so now you can be resilient to the stress in your life. So for me, I mean, we've known each other since 2001. I mean, mm -hmm. Mel Sif, yeah. the classic, yeah. And so, talk about that on the podcast. yeah, so I mean, uh, for me, I used to be just, you know, just super, I mean, if a week went by and I didn't punch someone in the face, like it was, that was a shocker to people. I mean, oh, it wow. was just, it was just <laughs> how I lived. What's up, bro? How you doing? Steve, what's going on? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's going on? What's going on? So that's the way, that's really the magic of RPR is it shifts that response to the stress. Mm -hmm. And so why does that matter? Well, like now, you know, I've got two twin thousand record locations. I've got three kids, two ex-wives. I've got a ton of stuff, right? And I travel and go to stuff. And I'm way more relaxed than I've ever been because I can handle it all better, right? I have, I use our pair. So when I, when I go through the airport. Yeah, you're the perfect guy for this because you were, you came in the west side like a house of fire. You were the strongest guy there for a minute and then yeah. gone, and, right? Yeah. and, and Injured and yeah, stressed and, and couldn't, yeah, yeah, and it was, you know, couldn't I mean, manage it, I guess. No, say, right? no, could, definitely couldn't manage it. And that's where uh, I think with... RPR, I think that's what the real match is, right? So you ask kind of, uh, what does it matter if my arm goes up or doesn't go down? Basically all that is, is it's, it's about parasympathetic sympathetic dominance. And so basically your parasympathetic system, you're never all one or the other, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a tone constantly. It's your autonomic nervous system tone. So everybody has heard of say fight or flight, rest and recover. We all learned that in like, middle school, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is those terms are actually a misunderstanding of those systems. And so think about like this. So the people who coined those terms 
are the same people in the 1970s that said if a woman ran a marathon, her uterus would fall out and she'd die. <laughs> right? So, so, so obviously that's ridiculous, but we've held on to this fight, flight, rest, recover. So the way that once you learn how we teach things in RPR and this different understanding of how the body works, you understand parasympathetic is your performance system. No matter what you're doing. So you want to lift weights, you want to wrestle, you want to fight, you want to sleep, you want to do whatever, you want to be parasympathetic dominant. Because whatever you're going to do, you're going to perform at that. If your sympathetic dominant raises, you're in survival mode. And so as soon as you're in survival mode, you don't perform as well. Now you can survive. And from an evolutionary standpoint, we needed that because if a bear does come in here, I'm going to ball up. I can't feel the claws on me. I have to be able to just hold this ball position for as long as possible till the bear gets tired. So what happens is when we go into that sympathetic dominance or survival mode, basically what happens is we start to use smaller muscles for movement. Because if we use our big prime movers, we burn out of energy quicker and we die. Mm. And so same thing, that's what makes humans, that's why we survived and that's why we ruled the world was because we could run longer than any, we're not faster than any animal, but because we have that survival system, we can run longer than anybody because we start to use these tiny muscles to create movement and the animals don't do that. Also, it's our interaction between each other because we communicate, work together. And these things are amazing for our survival, but because of the environment we live in, it causes health issues, it causes sleeplessness, it causes anxiety, it causes all these things, injuries lifting. And I see it all the time. And so you ask, you know, okay, why does it matter if your arm goes down? It doesn't. It just tells you that, that you're now sympathetic dominant. You primed yourself for that. So what that means, so that your arm goes down, that's not the important part, it's what it means, mm -hmm. right? And so that's where you have, so it's like, okay, I don't care if my arm goes down or it doesn't. Yeah, what's that have to do with squats, right? <laughs> but what that means is that your entire nervous system has shifted to a sympathetic dominance, so now you're not gonna squat as much, you're not gonna bench as much, and if you go into a meeting like that, you're gonna be more anxious, you're gonna maybe, so before I started doing RPR, I couldn't negotiate anything. So literally going to a car dealership, and there was two outcomes. I was either going to punch the sales guy in the face, right? That, that was it, or he was gonna give me what I wanted. Mm -hmm. there, there was no other outcome. So it got to a point in my life where I had to stop punching people in the face. Uh, because, because the last guy I punched in the face, it cost me a lot of money. And so I'm like, this is not sustainable. And so, uh, so I'm like, okay. So then I just started avoiding confrontation because I knew either the person gave me what I wanted or, or they went to the hospital, right? And, and that's, it's not a, that's not a great strategy. So this allows that to shift and now like I can negotiate things and, and have conversations and, and live in a way that's just totally different than the way I survived before. Because yeah. the way I was living before wasn't performing, mm -hmm. it was just surviving, right? To go back to what I said, right? I'm the strongest guy, I'm on top of the world and then what happens, yeah. right? I was in survival mode. I couldn't, I couldn't just be safe in what I, where I was. I had to just attack everybody else and basically bring them down so that I could feel like oh, now I'm safe. That's what I do all the time. That's not <laughs> good. So with this, what what we'll do? Um, we can test. So I like this. I just put that in front of my pants. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just. I don't think we can get it that close. Okay. Uh, but um, <laughs> so uh, what we'll do is we can do tests. So. Um, Okay, so this is test six, all right. So um, we can test anything you want. We can test rotation, we can test sit-ups, we can test hip extension, like if you want to like for a squat or something, we can test that, um, whatever you guys want. So you guys want to test my shoulder or something like that. Or, okay, or rotation. so let's, yeah, let's do rotation. Like what kind, of, what kind of sports did you play? Um, so I, well, I played soccer. I currently lift and I do jujitsu. Awesome, I so love jujitsu too. So I love jets. Uh, You've been doing that for a little while, right? Yeah, so. How long have you been at that? Well, I, so we, eight years ago, I had uh, about a dozen people in from Brazil for a uh, fight camp for Worlds. And, uh, and I started doing it then, but then uh, I've had seven knee surgeries. So my knee really started bugging me. And so I stopped for a long time and I just recently started cool. again. So basically, and part of it is this. So I was told seven years ago that I wouldn't make it five years without a knee replacement. And now I'm back to doing jujitsu and these things that That's literally, it. like I, like they just basically said, this is impossible. Yeah, just yeah, forget yeah. about doing that stuff again. And nice. so, but basically because I use, and, and the thing is, and this is kind of, I think where people get confused too, RPR doesn't 
replace anything you're doing. It literally doesn't even change anything. You know? it's, it's before everything you're doing. So it makes everything you're doing better, more effective and efficient because it addresses the nervous system and nothing anyone's doing is addressing the nervous system in the way we talk about it. So before I learned this, I thought I did nervous system work. Like I did box jumps and I did speed squat, right? I did all this stuff. I'm like, that's nervous system. That is potentiation of the nervous system, which is a mechanical paradigm. We're just raising whatever neurological function. It's, like, it's like warming up. Yeah, exciting. Warm up to, yeah, yeah, we're exciting it, but we're not actually changing the firing sequence. Right. What RPR does is allow you to change the firing you sequence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was saying that yesterday in the seminar, I'm like, you know, people think steroids are so effective, and they obviously are. They help with size and strength for sure. But they don't actually really do much to your central nervous system at no, all. It no. just tra changes their muscle mass. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Helps you. I mean, helps so you recover better. They work on some drugs that will change, change your nervous system. system. Well, the, the cool part is you don't need them because you can just do it with RPR, right? Like you don't even need a drug. Yeah. So let's. So your soccer player jujitsu. So rotations important. Yeah. So we'll do rotation. So what I'll do is this just test force. So this will read out right here. Um, what I'll, I'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. So uh, the way let's I got it set up here. is I have to do two tests on one side, but I'm gonna. We'll just do one side, so it's just so easy. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna say one, two, you can put your arms down. I'm gonna say one, two, three, go. I'm gonna push and rotate. I don't wanna push, because it'll false, did it false read that test? I know, good. good, okay. So I'm just gonna rotate, you resist me. That's it, Got it. and then we'll do it twice, because I have it set up to test twice. And then we'll yeah. just skip past, we'll do the wake up drill, and then we'll retest. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Good, cool. Can I be able to see it? One, mm -hmm. you got it, mm -hmm. cool. Ready? One, two, three, go. Cool. Awesome. And then this is right. So I'll, uh, we'll do right just because okay. it's easy. Same thing. Ready? One, two, three, go. Good. I'll Ready? snap. One, yeah, my elbow. <laughs> Pops. Ready? One, two, three, go. Awesome. Cool. So now we'll just do another test. So wake up drill. So. What's uh, it'll read. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, so basically that tested that. We'll test. We'll just do the wake up drills. We'll just retest and then we'll go to the readout where we see everything read out. Cool. Uh, so what I want you to do? Oh, Keep the yeah, this is the only one you can't do yourself. So Look you at these lats. <laughs> Good, nice. That's it. Awesome. Now we'll just retest. So you have the thingy. Yeah, it's on test seven. Good. Awesome. We'll test uh, left again. All right, same thing. Ready? One, two, three, go. <clears throat> Bam. All right, one more. Ready? One, two, three, go. All right, we're gonna test the other side. Ready? One, two, three, go. <clears throat> JL's Ready? pretty damn strong one, too, so two, this is like. Three, go. Guy's dead <laughs> up at over 800 pounds. All right, so. By the way, he, if you guys saw the first one, he wasn't not rotating as much, okay? So he was still trying to, he was pushing more into me this time than the last one. Yeah. On. Now we got him out of breath, great. I know. Okay. Give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our test. So left was 52, right was 35. So there's a little bit of imbalance, but um, in those tests, but, but I mean, solid. Where do we go from? 83 and 81. Damn. So, so the first tests were 52 and 35 pounds of force that were used. So the average was 48, 31, max 52, 35. So even that, like you, you do jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So you had a, a fairly decent imbalance rotation side to side. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the test here, it balanced right out. So 83 and 81. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, 52, 35 to 83, 81. So I don't know, even taking the high one, 52 to 83, that's what? 70% increase in strength yeah. instantly. Mm -hmm. And the 31 to 81, that's like 120%. Yeah. So, and that's instantly, right? And mm -hmm. so the cool part is, right, how long did that take? 15 seconds? Yeah, not long at all. And so this is the thing is that with your nervous system, you can do this stuff when you're competing and instantly gain 70% strength or up, you know, obviously that was 120, that was huge, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll vary based on your compensation pattern. 
So when I did the first one, the one side wasn't quite compensating as well as the other. Yeah. We reset that compensation. Now all of a sudden you're 70% stronger and it's even. Mm -hmm. And that's even more important because if you have asymmetries, as you know, yeah. that's what causes injuries. Mm -hmm. And so that's where our PR, not only does it make you stronger, but it helps balance those asymmetries by resetting the compensation pattern. Where can people find out more about this stuff? Reflexiveperformance.com. We have an online course there. We have in-person clinics. So uh, we're all over the country. I mean, we're going to Hong Kong next week. We've been to Australia. We go all over London later this year. Uh, but we have an online course. Mm. Online course, it's it's amazing. It's seven hours, shows everyone how to do it yeah. as coaches. And so um, we're we coming- a facility here too. And yeah, we have in Columbus area. Yeah, we have two uh, 20,000 square foot private training facilities here in Columbus called Spot Athletics. Mm -hmm. uh, so people in the area, we have uh, people in our facility that do it as well. If they just want to learn quickly, but we're coming out with a lot later this year, which is going to, we're basically going to take that seven hour course. And for that's really for coaches. We get into the science of things. We really dive deep, right? And so later this year, we're, we're finishing up our cuts. We're actually going to come out with an individual course. So it's gonna be about an hour. And so for people who are just like, I'm an athlete, I wanna be 70% stronger instantly, it's gonna be about an hour course and it's just gonna give you the nuts and bolts of how to do it mm -hmm. without all the science and, and why it works and all that. Which, do you care why you got 70% strong, really? As an athlete, no. <laughs> right, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, as a strength coach maybe, but as an athlete, yeah. you just wanna win and feel better. And mm -hmm. that's what's so cool about it. down, but when it's strong, it means you're parasympathetic, it means your body can use the big prime movers. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead and put your arm up and I'll step, I'm going to push down, right? So I'll say one, two, three, go and push down. One, two, three, go. Good. Nice. Awesome. He's parasympathetic. That's awesome. Now he sat over there and so that just gives me information, right? So I want to see if that information, did he sit over there because of his physiology or because he just wanted to stay out of the way? So I'm just going to do something a little different. So yep, yeah, same right over here. Yeah. Look at my finger. Cool. Now put your arm up. Ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Same exact. Watch. In my mind it was. Yep. So, awesome. So look at him. Put your arm up. Ready? One, two, three, go. Now look at my finger. Put your arm up. Ready? Fine. One, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> because things being Party close. Tricks. No, it's 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 evolution. It's not magic. It's literally just the electricity of your body. The difference is, is I understand how your electricity works. So these lights, no one's like, oh my God, the light bulbs are on. You speak in his language, electrician. Are you electricity? <laughs> no one's amazed by light bulbs coming on, right? However, how long does a light bulb burn for, right? Maybe a thousand hours or something. That's the mechanical understanding. But if I flip the light switch, the light bulb doesn't burn at all, right? Your nervous system is the electricity. So your muscles, that's like the light bulb. We see them working, we know what they can do. But if the electricity's not running correctly to it, it doesn't work. And so basically all we're doing is showing people where the light switches are in their body. And so with this, you, there, your arm goes weak because you think you sat over there because you're staying out of the way. However, the way I see it is that if you came, if you got close to us, that drives a sympathetic or survival instinct in you and it actually makes you anxious. So you sit over there because you're less anxious from far away because when you get close like that to people, it actually drives a survival instinct in you. And so your behavior is really driven by your physiology. And this, people don't understand because we have a whole- He's kind of always that way too. Yeah. He's always like, I don't want to be in any, I don't want to bother anybody. But it's not- Right, so, I understand. So I can show you how to reset that and then you'll have no problem and you'll be fine being close to people, things like that, and it won't bother you at all once you reset that. And then you can just, and that's what's so cool about this, is that once you understand these physiological aspects. Don't make them too much of a close talker. Right, 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 <laughs> right. And so, so this is where people think they sit somewhere or they don't like someone. And all it is is evolution. Your body, the number one thing you have to do is survive. So in order to survive, you have to feel strong, you have to feel stable. And being close makes you, it not just makes you feel, it actually makes you weaker from a physical standpoint. So you sit over there because you're much stronger over there with people far away. And so this is the thing, we have a whole part that I've beta tested with a couple companies, it's RPR leadership. 
So it's the physiology of leadership. So it's going through a lot of these things with companies and how they interact with executives and their employees, but not from a here's how you talk to people. It's literally what's going on in your body that's causing your behaviors. Let's reset that so your behaviors are different. So it's changing the subconscious, which is way more powerful than the conscious, right? So I can think about things all day long, but for me, I didn't think about things at all, and I just changed because it was subconscious. And your subconscious is what's driving your behaviors. We just rationalize them, right? Like when I said, why'd you sit over there? You're like, oh, I just want to be out of the way. We rationalize that in our conscious mind, but it's our subconscious that's actually driving our behavior. Well, it's funny too, because you, you hit it head on. And I, I kind of understand what you're talking about, how to correct it, I have no clue, but. Yeah, and that's what we show, right? We just yeah, yeah. show how to reset that, and it's a combination of breathing, it's a combination of the wake-up drills, and then there's certain sequences for certain different things, and uh, and that's what we teach, right? And the cool thing is you can do it all yourself, right? So, like, obviously, I live in Columbus. You, you don't live here. I never see you again. I show you how to change that. You have that tool for the rest of your life, and that's what's so cool about this is it's all stuff you can do yourself. So that's, See if you can show them something. What could you so, show them now that right. could help? So, okay, so what I want you to do is stare, stare at my finger. <laughs> Okay, so stare at my finger. Uh, first, make a fist. I'll show you. This. Don't make, smell make his finger. Fist. Put your thumb on your fist like this. So you can this part of your thumb. Mm -hmm. Cool. So stare at my finger. Start at the top of your sternum right here and rub up and down, just kind of like this. And just keep staring at my finger. And just rub up and down like this. No, so oh. yeah, here. So just one, just like that. But use your thumb there. So stare at my finger. Go all the way down your sternum. And so this is going to be a little bit different for everybody, but I, I see some things going on with them, so we're just going to go right to, to what we need to do. Cool. Now, take your, take your fingers, find your belly button. Here, watch, I'll just show you. Right here, so look at my finger and rub right there. Make sure it breathes. It's like doing chicken dance. In through your nose, up through Good. Cool. Awesome. All right, cool. So look at my finger, put your arm back up. Ready? One, two, three, go. I see your finger different too. Right? It's clear. Looking at your finger was different that way than it was the first time. That's how simple it is. Now, I skipped a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. I've been doing this so long, so I just knew right where to go for you. Yeah. So the longer you do this, you just, like in our courses, we basically just walk people through it. a sequence, right? So it's basically a 10-part sequence. I just get to skip a lot of parts because I've been doing it. Now, when I first started, I couldn't skip anything because I didn't see what I see now, right? Mm -hmm. But now you know that. So even simple things, right? Like if someone is a close offer, you're gonna freaking hate that person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, but now you understand like how to actually change that. So someone could be a close talker, you go through that and it literally just instantly shifts. Now you have safety and now you're like, okay, yeah, this dude's fine. If you what I found the weirdest though was literally how staring at your finger felt different the second time, like, I almost knew, and I tried to hold my arm up. It wasn't for lack of trying. That, that's crazy. Holy shit. Well, but it, it, so this is the thing, right? No one's amazed if I take that light switch and I flip the lights off in here, right? Or if I flip them off. All I just did was show you how to do that within your own body. Yes. And all the light switch is is just sympathetic parasympathetic, right? It's performance, survival, performance, survival. And if you're in that survival state, it literally changes where you sit in a room. It changes how you talk to people. It changes how you interact with people. It ch makes you stress out when you shouldn't be because your body has to feel safe and strong because it has to feel like it can survive. And that's what we're hardwired to do is survive. Like I get it. We have iPads and we travel and we're fancy and all these things, but we're really just animals hardwired to survive. And so once you understand how that wiring works, it literally changes you as a person. Like it's, it's off. Awesome. Yes. Does it get rid of aches and pains? Does it help performance? We have, you know, we, we have major division one college football teams. They implement RPR. They drop their injury rates, their soft tissue injury rates by 50%. They drop concussions by 70%, right? It's like, I mean, it changes the game. We have one guy, uh, he's, a strength, he's, a, he's OG, OG strength coach. Like he was four time NFL strength coach. He's been a strength coach for 40 years. Like I'm 41, he's been a strength coach since I was one, right? So he's been doing it for 40 years. He implements RPR, has first season ever, not one soft tissue injury in 40 years of strength conditioning. Jesus. Now, I, now granted, there's some luck in that, right? Like I'm not saying that RPR was everything because there's some luck and, and there's some things like that. However, in 40 years, number one time he implements RPR, has the next season zero soft tissue.